walked in, I didn't even think I was in an actual school building. I thought it was something like a house, <laughs> just because the grand staircase reminded me of something like on a big cruise ship or something like that. I can't get over the detail that went into this building. I know that the focus is on sustainability, uh, recycling, and making sure it runs as effectively and efficiently as possible. Um, that it's supposed to last a long time and be energy efficient, essentially. I think it stands out a lot from the other buildings. Uh, it has a lot mo more modern look. Uh, it's really vibrant. Uh, has, a, has a good warm feel to it. It's inviting. Uh, makes you want to come inside. Uh, so I like it. I mean, I came in, everything all nice, neat, clean. I feel like a good environment to study in. Well, there's a lot of red and uh, that's the first and most obvious impression. Uh, it is a beautiful building. Uh, it's very, very impressive as you come in and see the, the twin grand staircases circling to the second floor and then just the, uh, the stone throughout that type thing. It, it's very well built. First impressions were that it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I've loved the colors, the space, the space, the lighting, everything is just really beautiful. Um, I really love all the windows. I think the natural light um, and the colors they've picked in the classrooms makes it a better learning environment as far as being a student. And I also really like the recycling centers. I think that's something that uh, hopefully will be pushed into other buildings at Western because I think it's a great idea. Welcome to Gary A. Ransell Hall. Kentucky's first large public building designed based upon LEED standards. I think you'll find this video to be very informative in terms of LEED standards and how those have been incorporated into our building. We are very pleased as the College of Education and Behavioral Sciences to take a LEED role in not only being a part of implementing LEED standards on campus and within Kentucky, but also serving as a model in instructional purposes for our students and the larger community as we help individuals not only become mindful, but to operate and to share with others the importance of being a part of a sustainable environment. I wish each of you the best as you take a tour of our building, and again, welcome to Gary A. Ransdell Hall. So we're here in Ransdell Hall, which will be the first building for which we will seek LEED certification at WKU. Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design is um, a certification that you can get for buildings that are built to certain standards. To earn LEED, um, you have to um, you know, have all these standards in place and you actually earn credit for each standard. So there's a credit for reducing water use in the building and there's a credit for energy efficiency. There's innovation credits that you can earn, which we're actually working on right now. Educating building occupants can, can earn us an, an innovation credit for LEED. So buildings can be LEED certified and the certifying organization is the U.S. Green Building Council. Um, LEED is entirely voluntary, but it's really, um, been amazing how many people have committed to, to lead. Um, so the, the, the amount of credits that your building earns um, determines what lead rating that you get. So you can get lead silver, lead gold, lead platinum, or just lead. Um, so for this building, we're seeking lead silver, silver certification. We have made a commitment, um, the university has made a commitment that we will build all of our new buildings and all of our new renovations to lead standards. You know, we need for our, our College of Education and really all of our, our university buildings um, to be models um, for our students and, and also for the greater community. Um, having the College of Education as our first lead seeking building just is, is, a, is a perfect natural fit that it worked out this way um, because future teachers are using this building and, and, and so they'll learn the benefits of, of all the you know, lead features of the building. We're training future teachers who are raising the next generation of doctors, lawyers, teachers, nurses, but you know, any student that takes an education class, whether it's an elective or whether students t uh, take on the education majors or come in for graduate programs, there's an example set. So that there's the opportunity to see how a building like this can be beautiful, functional, have an aesthetic and at the same time provide high technology, comfort, 
and just an atmosphere of learning and sustainability that respects the environment. Having the example of this building is certainly a monument to that, I think. The architects on the job with regard to the project did an exceptional job in terms of designing the building with a very uh, classic and historical uh, facade, keeping in context the native Indiana limestone and brick material with the columns. There are several things that we took into account in the construction of the building with regard to sustainability that is not readily evident to people that use and occupy the building. By that, we took advantage of attempting to use as much recycled material as we possibly could. That can include a variety of materials that are in the building, including wood, stone, and items of that nature. And also, we took advantage of using regional materials, which was a, a concerted attempt to source materials that were within 500 miles of the building. We did use materials with a low emitting uh, material, VOCs. By that, this building does not have a new building smell, kind of akin to a new car smell. The carpeting that was used throughout the building uh, it does have a recycled content to it and it was chosen for that reason. The floors in the common areas is a, is a composite man-made material called terrazzo. It's a concretious product which has no off-gassing of materials and also is very durable and very sustainable. It includes partial recycled content. The three-story atrium creates a very dramatic entrance to the building with its skylight at the top of it and also the natural light that infiltrates on the outer edge. We did use the the harvesting of natural light wherever possible in the building. We did open up the building to create as much natural light that we could utilize as possible. This is a recycling station that is typical for each floor of the building. We do have these recycling stations on each floor which have four recyclables that we collect, those being cardboard, paper, plastic, and aluminum. We also recycle a tremendous amount of cardboard and other packing material from furniture and other things that were brought in to fully equip the building. It was a very concerted effort and a lot of material was recycled. This is typical of a medium-sized classroom in this building. There are 22 classrooms that provide a very pleasant instructional environment for our faculty and students. Things that we've done inside classrooms include ceiling-mounted projection screens for smart classroom discussion, projection screens, and the use of highly energy efficient lighting throughout the building. Uh, there's, in conjunction with the energy efficient lighting and the harvesting of natural light, there are dimming systems that harvest natural light where an exterior wall is so that the fixtures can be dimmed appropriately and also occupancy sensors to turn off lights when rooms are unoccupied. This is typical of occupancy sensors that are used throughout the building which will turn off the lights when the space is unoccupied. We've used a combination of wall sensors in this particular instance as well as ceiling sensors that are liberally scattered throughout the building. The ceiling mounted sensor will sense the natural light that's being harvested in the room and will dim the fixtures accordingly from the back of the room to the front of the room. Another sustainable feature that was implemented in the construction of this project is what's called a reflective roof. It is, has a white coating and does what's called reduce heat island effect or the heat that's absorbed by the building via the roof. This is the main mechanical room for the building. This is where all of, most of the HVAC equipment is housed for indoor air quality as well as thermal comfort. This room might seem fairly small, but you're only seeing about one-fourth of it. The large insulated box behind me is one of two main air handling units. Uh, they're roughly this, the size each of a freight train boxcar. They provide airflow throughout the building, and each zone, typically each classroom and each office, can control its own temperature individually. Directly behind me is a small feature called a rain garden. It is designed to hold water, and be populated with various species of native plants that do not require irrigation. In fact, the entire building was landscaped with plant material that does not require long-term irrigation and will be sustained under drought conditions. The parking lots in this particular parking lot, which are asphalt, do have a reflective coating on them, which again is to reduce heat island effect and prevent the parking lots from getting so hot under high summer sun conditions. We, in addition, we used a concrete surface in certain areas called pervious concrete, which assists in drainage through the concrete for stormwater. With regard to this building and also the campus in general, we also encourage mass transit via the WKU shuttle service. Uh, bus stop is directly behind me. It's one of the larger stops on the tour. Immediately to my right, adjacent to the building, are a number of bike racks, which the university also promotes the, the use of bicycles and walking as opposed to motorized travel. Well, I think it's really exciting to be in a new building, and especially a, a new building that was built in an environmentally conscious manner. And I also have been thinking about the fact that because of that, 
um, there are probably lots of opportunities but also lots of challenges for the faculty and staff and students that will work and teach and learn in this building. Um, and that is how to maintain that environmental consciousness of the building and think about how we could incorporate that into our classes but also then our students who will be teachers think about how they can use their settings um, to relate those kinds of concepts to young children. When you have a program in a place like this that is preparing future teachers and they're going to be spending a lot of time in a building that has a special characteristic as this one does, we need to make sure that we embrace our curriculum in the same way so that those teachers that go going out in the schools that have experienced this kind of an environment uh, will have a chance to incorporate sustainability into their teaching as well. the bomb.